The resignation of Claudine Gay has been met with a great celebration on the right, and people have been invoking almost every single contemporary terrible concept in culture, DEI, ESG, wokeness, affirmative action, to try to explain and do a diagnosis, an autopsy of Claudine Gay's presidency. But what if I told you that a majority of the commentary coming from the right on this issue is absolutely incorrect? And what if I also told you that Claudine Gay, her position at Harvard and her resignation has nothing to do with DEI, ESG, wokeness, or affirmative action, and everything to do with the literal structure of America's higher education system. If you are willing to entertain a different perspective that will actually help you understand what's going on and not, and not send you around the ringer in this sort of culture war rat race, then please stay tuned and keep listening, and I shall explain my reasoning. As someone who wishes to see America restored to its full health, as someone who considers himself a conservative, and as someone who absolutely abhors a lot of the concepts that have percolated around in our culture in the past four or five years, including DEI, wokeness, ESG, you name it, I also understand that American culture has had a lot of problems before those concepts even entered the public consciousness. And I'm not trying to be dismissive. I'm simply trying to be realistic. Many people will point to the fact that Claudine Gay ascended to the presidency of one of the most prestigious universities in the country. I'll address the issue of prestige in education in a second because it's really just a scam, but we'll get we'll just that in a second. And she managed to stay there and engineer policies that were fundamentally bad for certain applicants in the Harvard applicant pool. And yet her, she herself was not qualified, and therefore they diagnosed the system with a bunch of different things. They say, well, this is an issue of wokeness, of ESG, so on and so forth. And for those of you who are not familiar with the story, Claudine Gay, the president of Harvard, resigned partially due to the backlash from her terrible testimony towards Congress on the issue of anti-Semitism, and also partially toward, due to the fact that there were immense uh, plagiarism allegations that came out and really tainted her spot as a as a as a as a president, and also the university lost over one billion dollars dealing with her. So she was obviously a liability and all that kind of stuff. But Claudine Gay is not the person to focus on. She's not even the concept to focus on. Wokeness, ESG, DEI, all of these are vain fascinations that those who love America will sometimes be captured by because they are the easiest and most visible culprit for us to indict and us to fight. Everyone needs a villain to fight. Every hero, so to speak, needs a dragon to slay. But Claudine Gay's position in Harvard and the response that Harvard gave towards this entire ordeal have everything to do with the inherent corrupted nature of higher education, which did not begin 50 years ago. It did not begin 60 years ago. It began almost 200 years ago. It'll be 200 years in a few years, in about a decade and a half or so. What am I talking about? Well, let's go back to the roots of higher education in America, or rather the roots of modern day higher education in America, because higher education in America has been in force since the colonies. But <laughs> the roots of modern-day higher education take us back to the 1830s. In the 1830s, a bunch of American academics went over to Germany, which was called Prussia at the time, and it was under the Kaiser, and they took instruction from a guy called Wilhelm von Humboldt. Now, Wilhelm von Humboldt is, is responsible for creating the sort of modern-day theories around education. John Dewey is the person who's oftentimes blamed for the condition of education in America, but it wasn't John Dewey that actually kicked the ball off. It was Wilhelm von Humboldt who basically gave this principle to these American educators who came over and studied under him and studied under the Kaiser, or studied under the king, Kaiser Wilhelm, and this principle is called Wissenschaft. Wissenschaft, the German word, which Humboldt used to basically mean that the university, the university system, should exist solely 
for the sake of pursuing knowledge. This is the man who a bunch of American academics studied under, or his theories influenced them. In fact, I'll give a quote here from this book that actually goes into the history of the modern day research university, which says, and I quote, under the idea of Wissenschaft, the teacher is not there for the student's sake. Rather, they are all there for scholarship and knowledge sake. Humboldt also had a second pillar to his educational theories. And he said, and I quote, the state, the government, must understand that intellectual work will go on infinitely better without it, but he only held this principle that the government should not be involved in education because he believed that if the government wasn't involved in education, education could better benefit the government. And this is the exact argument he made. He wanted the academics to have their own little space carved out in the world. And he justified it by telling the king, by telling the monarch of Prussia, hey, I'm going to use this to benefit you, to benefit the society, and to benefit the collective. Therefore, if this is going to help your rule and help your legitimacy by having these state-influenced concepts in my education while keeping it independent, we can actually do something good. It was Humboldt who created the modern-day research university. How many Ivy Leagues do you hear say that they pride themselves on research? And that there are entire universities, like the first research university in America, University of Michigan, which was literally founded by a student of Humboldt's that literally focused on this idea. The problem, and, and I'm going to get into it in a second. The problem is all these American educators became educated by Humboldt and these German ideas. The entire faculty of John Hopkins University actually studied in Germany, then came into John Hopkins, created it. It's, by the way, the leading medical institution in the world. Do you wonder why there are things like gender affirmation surgeries with these ideas where knowledge is tied to social consciousness and not tied for the sake of the person? <laughs> you see where you see the connection? And all of these people basically took these ideas and implemented them into the American education system. Then the progressive era happens, and that literally shapes our educational landscape. We have so many things introduced, and all of a sudden, we get to our current point in time. Why am I taking you on this history lesson? What am I saying? I'm saying that Claudine Gay exists in a context of a higher education system that is based on status, that is based on, that is based on research, and that is based on academic politics, but absolutely has no care for the intellectual health or well-being of the student. And that is why someone like Claudine Gay can actually reach the upper tier of this system, because the system does not care about knowledge or morals or merit. The system cares about perpetuating itself and awarding those who will go along with the system to help perpetuate it. Even a Marxist like Cornel West understood this was wrong and this was antithetical to the approach of knowledge, which basically got Cornell West in trouble with Harvard and other universities he taught at because he refused to play the academic politics game. And regardless of where you are politically, you should agree that education concerns the intellectual soul of the youth, not the internal politics of a system. And yet that's what education was in Prussia and that's what education became in America in the 1830s onward, and that's what higher education is defined by right now. You've got professors who are more interested and worried about getting their names out there with a research paper presenting at a conference than they are actually ensuring their students can have an intellectually healthy perspective towards the world. You've got professors who are more interested and being appeasing and appealing to the faculty of the university rather than actually studying on moral conviction and on the knowledge of truth because it's part of the system. DEI, wokeness, is all a symptom of this broader disease which ties education into politics and politics into status and status into this nonsense that has became the higher education system. It's all a part of the system. And yet so many of you want to sit here and say, oh, the woke has died. Oh, we, we, we beat Claudine Gay. That means uh, Merit's coming back. No. They literally preserved her pay, her over $900,000 pay, and let her keep a lower position. She's just stepping down from president. So you know, let me ask this question. Do you think 
that a former president that has the prestige in the system of being one of the first black women presidents of Harvard is actually going to be diminished in influence by losing an honorific that we all understand she really didn't even do anything in that honorific in the first place. Not only is this not a win, anyone who claims this is a rejection of, of, of the illnesses of our culture is not paying attention. It's not about Claudine Gay. It's not about wokeness. It's not about DEI. It's not about affirmative action. It's about a system that was literally conceived in old world European philosophy, which infected America in the early 19th century and has matured into this monster, which has ensnared the minds of men in this trap that they need this system to have a good life. That's what the lie of college is about. The lie of college says that you need this system to have a good life. Now, thankfully, that lie is fading away and it's going away. But this lie has impacted generations. And so while many of you clap over Claudine Gay being resigning or whatever, even though she's keeping all her stuff, while many of you clap about that, you've got students who are still going into thousands upon thousands, over $56,000 of average debt in America. While you guys clap about Claudine Gay res resigning, we still have a cradle-to-grave cultural, political, uh, industrial complex that is quite literally filling the minds with children from the moment they are born with nonsense notions that benefit only a specific group of people that are in power who wish to maintain their power. While you guys clap over Claudine Gay resigning, we still have a culture that is not pride as our founding generations do, did. Innovations of the mind that actually move our society and civilization forward against the enemies of it and the enemies of freedom. While you guys clap over Claudine Gay resigning, you still have a system that is a product of status and largely doesn't even care about the pupils. While you guys clap, the world's still on fire. And many of you may say, Christian, Take a small victory. This is not a victory, people. Claudine Gay is the figurehead. She is the avatar. She is the ceremonial head. She is the queen of England of higher education. She is not relevant. The phenomena that brought her into place in the first place and enabled all of these mediocre fascinations, DEI, affirmative action, to come into place, that's what matters. And if conservatives don't even... How can, you, how can you be a conservative? How can you defend the nation if you don't even know what you have lost? It is impossible. How can you say, I'm a conservative, or I'm America first, I'm an Americanist or whatever, and yet you don't even know how damaged America is, and you want to focus on Wokeness. <laughs> I'm not laughing to be rude. I'm laughing because if I don't laugh, I'm going to cry. We are at a turning point in this country. And we want to affix our eyes and our focus towards personalities and not actually deal with what's going on under the surface. This is the problem. This is why American politics have been dominated for so many years by a bunch of evil people that manipulate, distort, and confuse, and do things that an average person doing would get us in jail and get away with it. It's not because the public is dumb. It's because the public is too distracted to know otherwise. We live in a culture of mass distraction, friends. And we have to wake up. We may think that Claudine Gay getting her comeuppance which she really didn't, by the way. She's keeping all that money. It's not come up. That's not, that's not justice. But the appearance of justice. We may think that it's a good thing, but in all reality, it's another smokescreen to distract you from what actually matters. The higher education system is not an American higher education system. An American higher education system, which existed a short time before 1830, will focus on the pupil 
We'll focus on developing them as persons, and we'll focus on ed- knowledge and education centered on their existence. And they will also, in addition to that, focus on applying universal principles and standards to that pupil and not injecting social nonsense into their brains. But post-1830s, we have not had an American education system. We have something entirely different. An alien created by old world ideas, causing problems throughout our society, creating a generation of people that believe that there is more merit in status than there is in substance. Why do you think there's such a substanceless generation right now that's going through all these colleges? Why do you think though? So? There's many reasons, but that's one of the reasons. We have to wake up, friends. Because if we don't wake up, more Claudine gays will pop up. They'll be slicker. They'll be slyer. And they will continue to wreck our cultural landscape with the poisons introduced in it by the higher education system. My friends, wake up. Wake up, please. My friends, if you like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe. Donate to me. I can't even think straight right now. We're we're so serious, guys. Please, I'm begging you, wake, wake up. Please, I'm begging you, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. I'm tired of sitting in front of this camera and screaming into the void and having my words overridden by the influencers who have more followers than me and, and they have more, more legitimacy than me, even though what I'm trying to say is most likely going to be as beneficial as those influencers. People, just wake up, please. It's not about me. This is about the future of our country and surviving the menace that is attacking the minds of our generations to come. All right, my friends, like this video, comment on this video, this video. So we're outside of this channel. I love you guys so much. And please, please, please stay pensive. Bye, everyone.